Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish, and this is Wasteland. Last time, we broke into the Guardian Citadel after we used uh, Brother Goliath as a punching bag to practice our energy weapons and our melee and our assault rifles and a whole bunch of other stuff on uh, until we accidentally did away with him by punching him too hard which was my bad, so I figure this time <sighs> we might as well go ahead and just explore the rest of the Citadel. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pick right up and see what happens. Here's where we blew the doors off with uh, multiple blasts of dynamite. I see treasure over there, but I know that this is going to dead end, so... ooh. Brother George, Sister Grace. Hmm. Oh, hastily pulling on armor and checking their weapons, a group of guardians prepares to stop your rampage. Brother Donald and Sister Marie. Oh my. <laughs> okay, where are they? Right there. Okay, well, everybody has melee weapons on except for Ira and Brains, who are still practicing their energy weapons. So... We're going to have to run up to them. Thankfully, though, that sweet Pseudokaiden armor that we picked up recently is going to protect us from most of what they can do. We do have to watch. I don't want to get too greedy because I can see that Ira and Pedros are down just a little bit. But if we trust our armor... Ooh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> If we trust our armor, then Ira will have one hit point left. Goodness gracious. Okay, let's do... Let's attack Brother Donald. Now. Those with laser carbines should probably shoot at one of the ones that's not right in front of us. Uh, ladies first. Brother Donald. Okay, let's see how this goes. Ooh, neither of them inflicted any damage. They must be wearing good armor too. That's all I can think of. Okay, 2 damage, 16 damage. Oh, okay, she got Brother Donald. Oof, there's Sister Marie. So let's do... let's do single shot. Because I want them still working on their energy weapon skill. I don't expect them to really take them down. Man, this armor is great, but the fact that they're still hitting us like that, and the only other thing that's been able to do that is, realistically, um, the Scorpitron. <laughs> since we, you know, since we picked this uh, this armor up, uh, indicates exactly how powerful the Guardians actually are. Okay. Nothing, nothing. Oh, his energy weapon skill went up to level 5, though. Awesome. And we have plenty of ammo, plus more that we can pick up back at Sleeper 1 in a huge pile. Okay, there goes Brother George. Alright, Skullduggery's Brawling went up to level 5. Nice. Oh, there's Sister Grace. None with a gun. I was really hoping that Iris' skill would go up as well, but... May need to rest. 
They don't seem to have a lot of hit points. They're just really hard to hit. Hmm. Ooh, screaming insanely. A guardian leaps at you from ambush. She clutches two spikes designed to puncture armor. Sister Wrath. Whoa. That is not what I was expecting. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, brains energy weapons go went up to six. Nice. We are we're looking for seven. Seven is the magic number. All right, Christina's brawling went to level seven. Nice. So at this point, everyone's assault rifle skill should be seven, if I remember correctly. Most people are well on their way to seven and brawling. And then Ira and Brains, the reason that they have the laser carbines equipped in the first place is because uh, they are the only characters with the energy weapon skill that do not have it at rank seven as well. So we will get there. Man, I'm kind of upset that we have to <laughs> that we have to kill Sister Wrath. Oh, there she goes. 2600 points for Christina. Dang. Okay, let's do a quick skill check. Okay, so Dinah is at 7 brawling, 7 assault rifle, and she should be at 7 energy weapon. Then we have Ira. Ira is at 4 brawling because we were doing energy weapons first and then brawling but he is at seven assault rifle and he's at six energy weapons so he just needs one more rank which is awesome so as soon as he gets that we can switch him back over to the proton axe skull here is at five brawling seven assault rifle and she doesn't have energy weapons yet and we've got brains so Brains is only at three brawling because he hasn't really been working on it. Seven assault rifles, six energy weapons. So the next level that this goes up, he'll be able to grab some valuable experience for brawling as well. Mayor Pedros, of course, is at seven assault rifle. He's working on brawling because he also does not have energy weapons. So he's at four there. Christina in much the same boat, I believe. She is at seven brawling and seven assault rifle. So she's sitting pretty. And then, of course, Metal Maniac. Metal Maniac is at 5 brawling, working on that. He's at 7 assault rifle, and he is at 7 in energy weapons. I'm very tempted <laughs> to actually have him start shooting some of those uh, rockets, because we have a big pile of those waiting for us back at Sleeper 1 also. And maybe raise his... Um, anti-tank weapon skill. Once he hits 7 and brawling, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll we'll see how it goes. From inside the west office, you hear a voice call out, I thought I told you I would see no one today, Sister Wrath. Hmm, okay, so there's someone in there. We also have this down here. Uh, Ira does have only one hit point. The door blocking your path is stout and constructed of thick wood bound by iron. It is locked, but not for long. Oh, yes, there we go. Ooh, Sister Theodosia, Sister Lucretia, Sister Ursula. Hmm. You know what? I do want to rest first. Yep, see, I was worried about that. I think I do want to heal up. Okay, so we know where we are. Got treasure over there, and it looks like that one is on a trap or something, maybe? 
very quickly. Okay, since she is at seven brawling, I'm actually thinking about having her switch to grenades, maybe. And we're going to need to buy some more grenades, but we can do that. Okay, let's go back down here to High Pool. Oop, no. There we go. Our resting place. Everybody's inventories are pretty packed. And part of that is because we actually haven't been using all of the assault rifle ammo that we brought for this trip because things have gone so well. We decided to use the Guardians for target practice. So, I have to see how many grenades we can actually hold. I wish there was a fast travel in this game, but at least things like night and day matter in a minimal sense and there's not really like a time limit on certain quests or anything, as far as I know. So if we do have to go all the way around to um, Darwin in order to buy grenades, we can. I'm just not sure if it's worth it right now because she only has four on her. Uh, which is not a lot, but I don't know how many more we can hold, and that's my main concern. Because, of course, I can still use the grenades that she's got to try and, you know, build up a few points on her demolition skill, which I would like to level up some more. But, uh... Eh. We can't hold a significant amount of grenades on the other characters to spoon over to Dinah afterwards, then I don't think that it's worth going all the way to Darwin for more grenades right now. Maybe later. We'll see. Okay, that is everybody at full. What's your backpack look like, bucko? lot of assault rifle ammo, which is fair. You know, here's some, some stuff. Maybe we could do this. Uh, I'm hesitant to throw anything away, but, like, we shouldn't need that anymore, right? And the sonic key we shouldn't need either. We also have the pulsar key. I don't remember what that does. We have all of these sec passes. Hmm... I'm reluctant to throw those away, though, because they have already come up uh, in other places. And we have seen that you do need specific ones to open certain doors sometimes. Yeah, we've got a lot of assault rifle ammo, so... So that's fine. Okay. I don't think we'll worry about it then. Yeah, I think we'll just use what she has and then she can switch back to... to chainsaws or whatever. <laughs> okay. Let's go down here, I think, and get this team first. Okay. I do want to close with them. Because we do have people who are still working on brawling. little bit of damage. Not too bad. That's very tolerable. That was half of Pedro's health, though. 
which is upsetting. Maybe if he had more health. We just need to level him up. Man, they are not screwing around, this group. Of course, there's also like four of them. So that makes sense. All right, here we go. Time to engage. It's the only real downside of a brawling based party is you do have to run up at your enemies through a hail of gunfire to get to them. Some might even call that unwise. Okay, let's do... you can shoot Sister Ursula. You can also shoot Sister Ursula. Okay, good. She did hit though, that's what matters. All I'm looking for is a hit. If she hits multiple targets, that's great, but what matters is that she threw the grenade and it stuck the landing. Ooh, go Christina. Actually, since we are kind of deliberately trying to level up, maybe I will have Christina evade. Because she is, in fact, at, uh, at 7 brawling. Pedros needs to level. Yeah, let's have Christina evade. Now, he is at five brawling, so he does need to participate. It's not doing a lot of damage. I wonder if it would go up, like, more if the, her demolition skill was higher. Presumably? I don't know how much it affects damage versus accuracy. Oh, Skull got one. Okay. Evade and attack. Let's do it. All right, Ira got her. Huh, there was surprisingly little experience. Let's go ahead and reload. Oh, you've got a power pack in here. There we go. And it looks like Dinah has one more grenade. Hmm. I guess let's see who's in this office, right? Ooh, a live grenade bounces into the doorway. Chew on this, infidel slime. <laughs> he did nothing. Oh, the guardian facing you sighs. Why does it always happen in my shift? He raises a strange weapon and shoots. Brother Austin. Lol. Relatable, though. Why does this always happen on my shift? Uh-oh. Okay, he moved to melee with us. Yeah. All right, well then. Oh, wait a minute. Evade. <laughs> there we go. Hey, demolitions went up to level five. Very nice. Excellent. That's what I wanted. I love how it's like Pummel's the brother Austin. Oh, ooh, Austin hits hard. Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, hmm. Well, let's see here. We are out of grenades, as we knew we would be, so. Let's actually do burst fire, maybe. 
Uh, hmm. Can Christina... She's got the medic skill. She's never really used it. Since she's evading anyway, let's have her help Brains. If she can. Rolling to level 6. Alright. It's going great. Seems like he might be a little tougher than the others. Maybe. Rolling level 6. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Man, that's even with our pseudo chitin armor. Oh, man. Unfortunate. Um. Oh, you know what? I switched her to the wrong weapon. She's supposed to be using a chainsaw. Let's do burst fire again. Once again, the medic skill. Let's help Skull this time. as quickly as their skills are going up, even though they've been grinding on the other ones. Oh, there's level 7 energy weapons for brains. All right. Excellent. But yeah, that seems like maybe he's, uh, he's even tougher than the others. Christina disobeys you? No, I don't want to help Skull. I don't want to put a band-aid on her. Girl... Um, oh wait. Actually, he needs to switch to his chainsaw. Christina, please, I am begging you. Okay, we are hurting him a little bit. 15 points of damage. Oh, she got him, okay. Damn it, Christina. <laughs> I swear. There. Who wants loot? Ooh, an ion beamer and four power packs. Um, let's see. Brains, you want that? Sounds like a new energy weapon. Try to spread these power packs out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to save it because that was a rough fight. Alright, so Brains is at level 7 with energy weapons now, so now he just needs to work on brawling. It's the Ion Beamer. That sounds like a new energy weapon. Well, hello, Raiders. Thank you, Dragon, for the raid. I appreciate that. Welcome, all of you. I hope that you uh, enjoy our Desert Rangers escapades. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Shout out to Kinikos. Yes, welcome. Okay, let's see. Can I rest here? I don't think that there are any random encounters. We just did. Yeah, I just took out Brother Austin in his office here in the Guardian Citadel, and he dropped an Ion Beamer, which I have not seen before. So that sounds to me like some kind of energy weapon, but I don't know how powerful it is compared to anything else that we have. So we've got that Mizon Cannon, which it hits pretty hard. It just doesn't have much ammo capacity. So we'll see. We'll see what this Ion Beamer does. Yeah, thanks Twitch for the ads, right? It's a service. <laughs> it's going pretty well. We have been using the Guardians here as punching bags to grind our skills. Now that we have this shiny pseudo chitin armor protecting everybody. A few more hit points. Of course, we're not recovering as quickly here when we rest in a hostile area as if I went all the way back to High Pool again, but... There we go. Maybe I won't rest the whole way up to full. I think it's fine. Okay. Now, Dinah's demolition skill just went up to level 5. Let's see if she can get us through this door. 
Absolutely, yes. Yeah, if you enjoy retro gaming, uh, you are in the right place because so do I. So if you want to throw me a follow, I stream every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 7 Eastern Time. Safe door is made of a strange gray metal that looks too solid to blast. Ooh, so it's specifically telling us that probably TNT won't work. Hmm. Yeah, I just started tonight. You're you're not too uh you're not too late. I haven't been doing it for very long, so yeah, Wasteland's kind of a big deal. Fallout, uh, the, the first Fallout game was actually built directly on the code that was supposed to be the original Wasteland 2. Yeah, I love the, uh, the little processor noises. Right? I mean, I'm thinking here. The walls are warm to the touch, were carved from the native rock, and places you see sayings inscribed in gold leaf. Hmm. Could we blow it here? Maybe there is... Hmm. Maybe we can blast it, because, I mean, this one took two blasts. So we just may have to hit it multiple times. But before we do, before we, like, waste resources, let's look around some more and see if maybe we can find a button or a console somewhere where perhaps we can open it remotely. No, don't have a key yet. Don't know if there is one. There may be one, though. Okay, let's go this way and stick to the hallways. Brother David. Ah, oh, there he is. This is the one who was backing up Brother Goliath. Oh, you better have a rough time, Davy boy. Oh, he's running away. Oh, that's what he did. Oh, Brother Akira. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Akira is here. Oh, man. And yeah, that's a good idea, Dragon, because uh, that has happened in the past, where it seems like the way things line up, a lot of people who um, are inclined to uh, to raid me that stream at similar times, uh, sometimes they'll they'll finish like 10 or 15 minutes before I do. I just use it as an excuse to stream for longer. I feel bad if someone shows up five minutes before I'm about to quit. And then it's like, oh, hi. Oops. So it's like, no, I'll just play a little longer. That's fine. Oh, man, he's hitting hard. Uh, I could do better at this, but I am deliberately trying to increase their melee. So I will take my lumps. And a few of these guys are, they're tough, though, because that's even with the pseudo chitin armor, we're taking a beating. Oh, man. Okay, so now we should be right here. I don't know what the maximum is. I think the most I've ever done was almost 10 hours. I did a long play uh, marathon of Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. And I did it all in, all in one sitting. And that was, uh, that was something. I had to kind of practice for that. Ooh. Awesome. We love a retro game. Okay, there goes Brother David. He's gone. Oh, here we go. Here's Brother Akira. Look at this. I love this icon. Uh, Brother Akira is everywhere you want to be. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to step to him. I hope when we step in the doorway that uh, we don't find somebody else. Not yet. One at a time. You know the rules. Yeah, my favorite... Uh, retro games are ones like this because I love to show that, you know, like Wasteland 3 just came out a little while ago and I love to show people that these games that uh, were stuff that I grew up with 
still have living, breathing fandoms and that people still play them and that they are still getting, like, new fans as well as old ones like me who have been around the whole time. Uh, maybe? I don't know, because the Guardians seem... Like, I know the Brotherhood of Steel and Fallout was based on them. Here's Brother Anthony, Brother Boris, Brother Nathan. Ooh. Okay, they're just one step away. And so, um, they, like, hoard technology to keep other people from having it. Like, they want to preserve it, but they also don't want to share it. And they obviously have, like, a whole religious thing about it. So the visa, I'm not really 100% sure. Maybe it's just because, you know, you see a lot of really big visa signs all over the place, and so it could potentially be that uh, they just think that it was important from back in the day. Okay, Christina's gonna evade. I need to double check Dinah. Isn't Dinah's brawling at level 7 too? Maybe I shouldn't be attacking with her either. Because of course, the more that we attack, the faster they go down. But the faster they go down, the less grinding we get to do on our skills. Of course, for the ones who have energy weapons at level 6 and 7, I am less concerned with whether or not their brawling also makes it to 7, I suppose, long term. Oh, that could be it. They might expand on it, perhaps, in, like, Wasteland 2. Do they have... Oh, is that the little, like, thing that they're holding? I didn't even notice that, Crow. Ooh. Okay, let me check Dinah's... Okay, her skill is at level 7, so actually I'm going to switch to having her evade. Brother Boris. Oh, no, wait. Single shot. She is still at level 6. Okay, that should do it. Pedros' armor absorbs the damage. Good, because he only has 7 hit points. Oop, Metal Maniac got Boris. Now it's just you and me, Nate. Oh my gosh, you're right. Look at it. That is what that is. Oh, wow. <laughs> I 100% I did not notice. Like, I knew he was holding something, and I kind of skimmed past it and didn't really pay any attention to what it actually was. I'm glad you said that. You're all alone with nowhere to run, Brother Nate. Oh, there he goes. Metal Maniac got another one. Man, he got every single one of them. Okay, who won't salute? No floor cash, three robes, four books, and a power pack. Well, we'll take the power pack. We don't need the rest of that stuff. How are we doing? Brains and Pedros are not doing great. Dinah's a little beaten up. Well, I guess relative to her maximum hit points, she's a lot beaten up, but she still has 19 on her. So let's see. The Guardian Museum. Ooh. From deep inside the museum, shots ring out. Brother Kenneth this time. Ken. Kenneth. Kenny. Hey, man. How's it going? Uh-oh. He got Pedros. Oh, he got brains. Well, they both were the ones with low HP. That's... That is as expected, honestly. I should say. Uh, see, I could shoot him. I could just open up with assault rifles and energy guns and, and just take him out. But I am deliberately trying to grind their brawling skill. And when you do that, when everyone is carrying chainsaws and proton axes and stuff like that, you do have to wade through a hail of gunfire. <sighs> as much damage as he's doing, I suppose I should probably have Dinah also join in on the attack. At least Pedros is back on his feet, though. Um, let's see, Christina... 
I know you're probably not into it, but why don't you try and help Brains? Last time I told her to use the medic skill, she was like, no. Oh, Pedros is down again. That's okay, Pedros is tough for having the least hit points in the party. Every time he hits the floor, it seems like he just bounces right back to his feet, and I love that about him. Dinah got him. Okay. Oh, and Christina actually successfully used the medic skill on Brains. Nice. Okay. Um... Let's go down this way. I'm waiting for Brains to get back on his feet. There we go. Okay, what's in here? The lights are off in the case and the smoky glass makes it nearly impossible to see what is inside. Okay, so we're gonna have to turn some lights on, maybe? Somewhere? Hmm, I think we definitely do need to recover before we go in here, though. So, we have not been in there. Oh! Brother Raphael, Brother Donatello, and Brother Philip. Oh, I remember them from before. Joaquin, Thomas, and Lucas. Okay, we'll head back this way. Yeah, it can be. I mean, especially for the time period, because this is from, like, 1986, right? Or is it 1984? One of the two. Uh-oh, they seriously wounded brains. Oh, no. Gotta get away. But I mean, some of the textures and things like that. Considering that this was made to run on, like, you know, just ancient computers. This game was big at the time. The original version of this was on four floppy disks. Okay, there we go. Okay, so Brains is seriously injured. Uh, hmm. That would be really funny, old man. Okay, well, we are probably going to have to figure that out. Okay, let's have one of these guys. Let's have Skull do it? No, let's have Dinah do it because she's got the highest intelligence, so it will probably take the fewest checks. Let's do a new macro. I don't know what's on F8, so we'll do F8. Okay, Dyna, Skill... Oh, she... Okay, wait a minute, let me start over. There we go. Use 1, S, 4. There we go. Okay good good okay now this time we actually will step down here to high pool and we will rest in our comfy bed here at the summer camp because oh now listen Bobby we do not have time or interest I should have gone down one more space before I started heading east there we go at least we can walk around him on the western side there we are. Credit Card Monks is also the name of my garage band. OC, do not steal, TM, TM, TM. <laughs> it's a very strong cult name. The Credit Card Monks. Petition to make that uh, modern street slang for like... I don't know, hedge fund managers or whoever it is that... Those guys who hang out at the New York Stock Exchange all the time like it's the, the only thing that they have to do in life and they think they're really cool. Yeah. And you know... You wouldn't... You wouldn't think they would be that popular, but surprisingly, there's a lot of interest. <laughs> it 
Is that anything? Is that nothing? <laughs> uh. Mm. Uh. Well, listen. Listen. Uh. Uh, I'm just I don't I don't want the uh, the credit card monk situation to get out of hand so I'm trying to take charge <sighs> oh no my husband's in the chat I love you too <laughs> I'm glad you still love me after that okay dynamite's got a few hit points left I do tell you off for bad jokes. I tell me off for bad jokes. That did kind of happen, actually, old man, because... Let's see, one more hit point. Oh yeah, I wouldn't bank on it either. <laughs> I, I guess you could say that uh, getting involved with a credit card cult is uh, borrowing trouble. But yeah, these dudes came out and were like, Hey, what are you doing when we went through the door? Originally, they were like, What's up? Why are you going in there? It's not your room. It's like, well, it is now, because I am the protagonists, plural. I am one, parentheses, four protagonists. <laughs> Specific pixel making a strategic withdrawal. <laughs> better stop I'm gonna start getting debt threats but um tish uh. <laughs> okay so it is just Ira at this point who is still working on uh, energy weapons he needs one more rank it makes sense he's a melee guy so he really should be coming in last with energy weapons the mess hall well it looks like one you should flip your tables back over. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh. <laughs> Unfollowed, blocked, reported. Oh, Sister June, Sister May, and Sister April leap up from behind the table and attack. Okay, well, let's run at them. God, I love this sprite art. It's very good. It's like Sally Fields, but a mafia thriller action movie. <laughs> yeah, well, did you see Brother... Uh, uh, Raphael and brother Donatello. I'm waiting for uh, brothers Michelangelo and Leonardo to show up. They haven't yet, I don't think. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the early summer collection, the spring and summer Col guardian line. I don't know the year that this is happening in. I was going to be like this, you know, the spring summer guardian collection of like 2085 or whatever, but Okay, you shoot Sister June. Uh, hmm. actually wait a minute. She needs to evade. There we go. Now That's better. 2087. Hey! I wasn't that far off. That was just a guess. There we go. Okay, back up. <clears throat> Introducing sisters April, May, and June. The Spring and Summer 2087 Guardian Collection. Available at a citadel near you. 
Okay, I think we took two of them out. Goodness gracious. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't kin a cause if I didn't have to, but like they really didn't give me a lot of choice because I'm assuming I don't have any other leads at this point. I don't know where base Cochise is. I think that's where we're supposed to go, but this is the only place we haven't been. And given how strong they are, I feel like we would not be able to do what we're doing without this pseudo chitin armor that we picked up from Sleeper 1, which of course then we had to do Darwin to do Sleeper 1. So I'm assuming this is where we need to be, and that somewhere in here we are going to find, like, coordinates or a lead to base Cochise, maybe? I don't know. But they haven't been very diplomatic so far. They started shooting as soon as we approached, so, you know, it really... They, they really did start this fight. We're just finishing it. Man, they do hit hard, though, because even with our pseudo kite, and look at that, we just came in with full hit points, and already Christina is down to 7, Mayor Pedro is down to 19, Skull is at 23. Jeez. I mean, what is trespassing, really? Private property is its kind of a silly concept when you think about it, especially in a post-apocalyptic world. Okay, let's see. Bank of soot-stained ovens stands here. This must be the kitchen island, yes. We are about that island life. A huge chef leaps out and attacks, screaming, My souffle, you have ruined it, says Brother James. You have all ruined my souffle. Once again, here we go. I keep hitting attack with Dinah, forgetting that she is at rank seven. Oh, uh-oh, I didn't know that energy weapons could jam. Oh, no. Oh, Metal Maniac Sprawling Skill is at level seven. Nice. So he's done. He's he's done everything we could we really care to do. Skullduggery's went up to seven as well. Nice, all right. Thank you, Brother James. Let's get some some applause for Brother James here. I I don't know. I hesitate to to theorize. Okay, let's um unjam that weapon. <laughs> We'll give them one round here. Now, listen, the description said he had a knife. I'm pretty sure. That cost us a power pack. That's the worst part about uh, having to deal with a weapon jam, I think. Whatever ammo is left in your clip, you lose it. And with energy weapons, that's awful because power packs are precious. Say that three times fast. Oh man, Alpha Centauri. There's a uh, there's a game that brings up memories. That was a good one. <laughs> Well, thank you, Dragon, and thank you again for the raid as well. I appreciate it. No, we want high interest rates. We want high interest rates. We want everyone to be interested. Uh, this is kind of a, a stalemate, I guess. We're not really hurting him very much, but he's also not hurting us. Yeah, I kind of remember that, because that carried forward to um, other Sid Meier games, like in Civ, Civ 5, which is the one that I typically play. Uh, that's my favorite, 4 and 5. But I mean, you build a lot of, like, barracks and national um, epics and, you know, those kinds of monuments and wonders and buildings, and uh, 
If you get to those early, you can really trounce everybody else. All right, Ira's energy weapon skill went to seven. Nice, that's what we were waiting for. Okay. So that way, everyone who has the energy weapon skill at all now has it at level seven. Excellent. Okay, so that means that it's time for a weapon change. Oh, oh, that's unfortunate. Oh no, look at this. Ira doesn't have a chainsaw. He just has this. Uh-oh. Sorry, uh, sorry, Jim. Sorry, Jim. I picked it up not that long ago, maybe a few months ago, and tried to play it a little bit, and I completely, I had no idea what I was doing. It had been too long, and I was like, isn't there something about worms, I think? And then I, like, got the plague and died or something. Huh, maybe I'll try this again in a few more months. <laughs> Just gonna, I'm just gonna go back to uh, Valkyria Chronicles for a while. Hello? Where did Brother James go? Oh, there he is. Okay, but, hmm, how did he leave our site, if that was the case? Wild. Oh no, Pedros, no! No! See, that Proton Axe is dealing some damage. I hope we find some more of those. Yeah, of course, like, I don't remember exactly um, what it is, but you know how sometimes the planet kind of, like, fights back and uh, it can give you... Ooh. Okay, well, Iris Brawling skill went up at least. Nice. You know, but you can have, like, natural disasters, and the, the wildlife will attack you, and there's, like, fungal infections and things. Ira's gonna take this guy out. Rolling level six. Okay, that's going up quick. Jimmy Boy here is not really a pushover. He's, uh, he's given as good as he's getting. Oh, good, Pedros is back on his feet. Nice. Yes. Exactly. That's your, like, random encounters. There we go. See, I knew with that Proton Axe he was gonna get him. Ooh, he was a chunky boy. What'd he drop? Two knives. Really? Then how was he shooting us? Make it make sense, Wasteland. Uh. Yeah, that's like, I usually play Gaia or University because I am try to, like, play in harmony with the planet. Which uh, behavior kind of carries over to um, Civilization Beyond Earth. Which was the spiritual successor, I guess? I don't think it's as good as Alpha Centauri. It's not a bad game. But it's not, it's not the sci-fi sequel to Civ Five that I was hoping it would be, nor is it the, um, okay, they're deliberately tipped over to provide cover. 20 feet, oh, there's a bunch more, oh no. Let's go this way first. I actually don't play the Spartans that much. I'm probably the worst with them as a faction because um, when it comes to a 4X game, if I can, I usually prefer to win through like technology diplomacy or, or culture or money or something instead of combat because I often feel like combat is kind of, we won't call it the default um, method but a lot of people, I think, treat it like it is. It's it's like the the recommended, most direct path to victory. It's the most obvious path. There we go. That's what I'm. That's what I mean to say. It's the most obvious path. 
It's like, well, of course you can kill everybody. That's easy. Okay, we'll rest a little here. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, here, let's... Now that Brains is back on his feet, there we go. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that that's true, really. Like, the gameplay was not bad, but with Beyond Earth, it just did not have the oomph behind it that Alpha Centauri did. Whereas Alpha Centauri had that overarching kind of sci-fi plot that linked all of the factions together and made it work. And with Beyond Earth, that feels very noticeably absent. It is just about the gameplay, and the gameplay is fine. Especially if you enjoy Civ 5 or Civ 6, because it falls kind of halfway between them, I guess. It makes me think of like how Baldur's Gate 2 falls sort of between 2nd and 3rd edition Dungeons & Dragons, and it's a weird hybrid rule set with odd subclasses and stuff. Uh, Beyond Earth feels like that. It feels like they used Civ 5's base ideas and, and engine to build it off of. Uh, but they were obviously testing the waters with some of the stuff that became a major part of Civ 6 later. And it just didn't stick the landing for me. Well, I don't know if I was prattling on longer than I realized or if I'm healing faster than I thought. Because we're actually already almost back at full. Need 10 more on brains and then we'll get back to it oh yeah I've played Baldur's Gate uh, every which way from Sunday I can't wait Baldur's Gate 1 was really a lot of fun to play on the channel with an active chat and stuff I've never done it like that and it was it was a blast so I'm definitely looking forward to um, continuing our party's adventures when we import them into Baldur's Gate 2 eventually. Okay, that's us done. Alright, and everyone is on melee. Uh, I do want to continue raising melee, but these guys are shooting at us. And I'm not sure what the best course of action here is. I either need to just grit my teeth and run at them and decide that I'm going to do that and take my lumps, or I need to switch the people who are already at rank 7 brawling to assault rifles, but I'm afraid that if I do that... Ah, see, mixing melee and range doesn't work very well unless you split the party, which is laborious. Because, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, because if I switch some people to assault rifles, what happens is they can't shoot while the whole party is running to close to melee range with their chainsaws anyway, so I'm still going to miss those turns if I move the party as a unit. Um, and then if they do hit and they deal dis uh, decent damage, it's going to deny targets for the ones who are trying to grind brawling. So... And yeah, I remember that there's a lot of really creative quests in Baldur's Gate 2. There they are. Oh, man. Couldn't see them from right here, which is weird. I should have stepped over one, and then I wouldn't have to move. Brother George, Brother Weeze, and Brother Joseph? Brother, Brother Weeze? Yeah, no, that's very, that's fair. <laughs> A voice comes over the radio from Ranger HQ. <sharp inhale> Rip and tear until it is done. <sharp inhale> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, we are we are here though. All right. Um goodness gracious. Yeah, it just starts banging out. Uh, you know what? There's too many of them. I think I'm... Here's what I'll do. I will have everybody who is not grinding, brawling deliberately, focus on one of them. And it'll be a different one. That will help. 
Yeah, I mean, they're like lawful or chaotic good or whatever anyway. There's a quest like that in the first Baldur's Gate as well. Oh, brains went up to level four. Finally, good. Metal Maniac got Brother George. Ira's getting four attacks now. Ooh, we love that. But yeah, uh, in all of those games, for the most part, like Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate, um, you know, there is an evil route through the game, and I just don't find it nearly as rewarding. Because that can be done in an interesting fashion, like if you play an, an evil character in Planescape Torment. Now that's an interesting game, because Planescape Torment is just really good anyway. And everything that you do in Planescape Torment can be interesting. Uh, but in Icewind Dale and Baldur's Gate, in all of those games, um, I just don't feel like playing evil characters or doing evil stuff has nearly as much of a payoff. You're obviously intended to be good aligned, and while Baldur's Gate especially leaves the door open for you to be evil, um, it really causes more trouble than it's worth. It creates more problems than it solves, and I think that it makes the story less satisfying overall. So it's like they, they give you that option, it is on the table, but it's it's very apparent that you are meant to be good aligned. And uh, that's the way that you get the most out of the game as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, exactly. I think KOTOR is very much in the same boat, uh, which makes sense because it was written by a lot of the same people and worked on by a lot of the same people because that was also a... Um, Black Isle or Bioware game. So there was some crossover there. But yeah, like, can you go Sith? Absolutely. Should you go Sith? I, I really don't see why. I just genuinely feel... You can write a good evil character storyline or an anti-hero, you know, where you play in the villain, whatever you want to call it. Um, but just in those games um, I don't know if it's because the writers themselves were less enthusiastic about it and that's not the story they really wanted to tell and they were just kind of putting it in there to give you those options and leave it at that or if it's more like maybe there was some budgetary or time considerations like some deadline things where they did the the good storyline still is obviously comes across as the core storyline because it's the most developed and they did it first to get it done and then the neutral and evil paths are not as polished which means that they must have come afterward and then if there was going to be cut content uh that's the content that got cut yes i Man, as much as I have my problems with um, with Mass Effect, uh, I still love it. And Renegade Shepard is so good, especially because if you rack up enough Renegade points across all games, people start remembering that behavior. And it's so funny when, like, like there's that one Krogan who uh, is just like, Oh, it, it, holy shit, it's Shepard, run! <laughs> Which is, like, not a Krogan thing to do. <laughs> And it's a shame because um, in Mass Effect, I actually, with my male ship, I wanted to romance uh, uh, Caden. Of course, because Caden is best boy. And um, Paragon male shepherds' voice lines just feel kind of wooden. They just don't have the same oomph that Femshep's lines do. But of course, at the same time, I mean... Uh, I, I get that because you have to consider um, that, uh, you know, Femshep's voice actor is in fact Jennifer Hale, and everything that Jennifer Hale touches is, uh, is gold, so no shade on uh, Manship's voice actor, but, you know, it is what it is. It's when you're competing with 
<laughs> when you're competing with that. Um, but I think that Manship actually does better as Renegade, not than Jennifer Hale as Femship, but like better at Renegade than at Paragon because Renegade Manship is so sassy. He puts me in the mind of Snarky Hawk from uh, Dragon Age 2. So. There you go. And yes, Braylor, exactly. It's a lot of the same riders, which is why you can see those similar patterns in there. <laughs> yeah, I remember that line. How about goodbye? Okay, that is the last of these guys. That is such a stone-cold line, though. Do you have anything to say for yourself? How about goodbye? And just ices the dude. Okay, here we go. I think that may have been the last of the Guardians. Ooh, all right, power packs. Okay, let's split those up. Let's see, Ira should be able to carry the other ones. Okay, cool, cool, cool. There we go. All right, I think that that's it, folks, for the, the ones that are out here, at least. But now we have this big area here, and we also have this door, which is very suspicious. And then we've got this vault over here, which we still have not gotten into. So it's like, hmm. Yeah, Shepard has so many good lines. People keep saying that. Enter new location. Yes, let's do it. A narrow hallway burrows more deeply into the citadel to the north. Oh. Oh, this makes sense. Yeah, because we haven't seen, like, chambers where they live and stuff. What is this? It looks like a manhole cover. If I step on this, will it explode? No, it's a pillar. Oh, the pillar is carved of sandstone and is more ornamental than functional as a support. Okay. Yeah, where if you go renegade, they look more and more like cyborg because of the implants and the, the wetware and stuff. And if you go paragon, then eventually that stuff kind of cleans itself up. Uh-oh, a black-haired warrior woman leaps up and blazes away at you. Mistress Chris. Okay, her name is Mistress. What do you want to bet she's going to look like Sister Wrath? Oh. All right, hold your horses. For those of you who may not have been here earlier in the stream when we fought Sister Wrath, get ready for this pixel art. There it is. <laughs> I knew that's what it was going to look like. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. I love this. I love this character and this design. They're nasty, too. I say they like it's a whole category of enemies, but the other one we fought, Sister Wrath, uh, she was mean. Ira got her, though. Okay. What we got in here? Ooh, a laser carbine and three power packs carry anything. Can Christina carry it? Yes. Okay, we will take those. Excellent. Who's in here? This must be the monk's cells. A male guardian leaps at you and behind him rushes in a woman to attack. Master Bruce and Mistress Jennifer. Oh. Hello, Master Bruce. Hmm. He looks sus. Oh, Jesus. 51 damage. Reduces him into ground round. I should just say so. Whoa. Oh, Metal Maniac got her. Oh, wow. They were only worth 40 each. Okay, so they were actually nothing. Ooh, some snake squeezins. We'll leave that for later. We don't need it right now. More snake squeezins. Okay, so this was the party room, is what I'm hearing. There's a bunch of robes on the floor, books scattered everywhere. 
snake squeezins. Okay, this looks like a closed room, so let's maybe go this way. Uh oh. Ooh, withering missile fire rains out from hidden slits in the wall. Mistress Karen appears at 28 feet. Priestess Alexa, Adept Mandisa. Ooh, okay. Yeah, Wasteland uh, came under a little bit of controversy back when it was new because of those descriptions. Because it was very lurid in that, you know, reduces him to a thin red paste. This appears to be a small guardian chapel. It is dark and the walls are painted with grotesque portraits. Ooh. These guys are seeming less and less wholesome. I've never played Dwarf Fortress. I've watched a lot of other people play it. Yes! Oh my gosh, I remember that. Explodes like a blood sausage. I was watching somebody else play Hexen just a few days ago, and it was like, man, I've not played that in 20 years, 25 years. There's a whole genre of games from around that time, like Hexen and uh, Power Slave comes to mind, some other ones. And I have not really played that genre yet on the channel. I think the closest I've gotten to that was, I mean, well, the only FPS that I've played on here was Hellgate London. And, uh, and some of y'all made me use a sword. <laughs> so, so you asked for a first-person shooter, and then maybe play a third-person melee character. <laughs> so yeah, at some point we'll have to get to, like, Hexen and, and Power Slave and Doom. <laughs> Master Griffin. Okay, where are we? Over there. Okay, well, let's go this way. Oh no, Dinah got knocked out. Yeah, <laughs> see? Y'all can't let that happen. When I do character creation, you have got to show up or we will wind up playing an FPS as a... as a TPM. <laughs> yeah, that's something I find with a lot of these old games. Is that even the ones you, uh, you get from, like, GOG, for example, um which are meant to run in DOSBox, or they're otherwise adapted to modern systems, sometimes they just don't run right unless you do something a little extra. And uh, I think that's fine. I enjoy the challenge because I've said this before on stream, but I feel like every time I play a new game, um, I, I learn something new. I learn some new trick. Which also means that I am learning more about the programming and the software and stuff that went into uh, these games back when they were new as well. Because I have to learn about, like, why do you have to set this particular setting to such and such in order to get it to run on Windows 11 or whatever? Why does it do that when you're playing on a computer that has, you know, an octocore processor? Oh, Lord, Soldier of Fortune. Yeah. Yeah, they really, like, went over the top with Soldier of Fortune. I know that that was up there kind of like with Mortal Kombat and the fatalities and stuff like that. I'm surprised it didn't wind up in front of Congress. The chapel altar has a bronze triptych on the front that depicts the rise, fall, and resurrection of man. Ooh. That's weird. Y'all see that? Like, why can I... Huh. You can't walk over these two, but you can walk over this one for some reason. Is there some reason for that? 
Huh. Who has the most perception? Nobody, really, but... Huh. Hmm. Oh, well. I don't know what that is, so... Yeah, it's a real horror show. How are they doing that? I heard that I know that there were slits in the wall that said that. But I thought they were up there to the north. Are they all along the west as well and they're shooting in at us? That must be what's happening. That's okay. We will we'll get out of here and get less unconscious than we are. Man, Pedros is a ninja when he is knocked out. Nothing can hit him. He's like a Final Fantasy Tactics character. Okay. There we go. Uh, it probably is going to be faster to just rest here than to leave the entire citadel and go to high pool. I can only imagine. Well, what we can do, though, perhaps is this, because there are no more enemies out here, so we might recover faster here. Oh, that's neat. I actually didn't know that. Oh, that would be really cool. Oh, okay, now I want to see, like, a pacifist run of Soldier of Fortune, like, one of the, the most violent games of its era if not the most violent game, and someone just goes through shooting all of the weapons out of people's hands and never kills anybody. That would be incredible. Of course, I am not a speedrunner. I am a normal mortal with limitations. So someone else would have to do that, but that would be very funny to see. About halfway there. Soon. Uh, we are not only sleeping in the kitchen, uh, but I do want to make it explicit that we are raiding their fridge and eating all of their sandwich materials. Like, I'm imagining that Ira especially is probably just, he found some salami or like some deli ham and he's probably just eating it with his hands like an animal. Like just a fistful of, of ham and just plunging it into a barrel of Arby's sauce and consuming it. His jaw unhinges and he just swallows a, a whole log of bologna. Dinah probably eats very genteely because where she's like a, a bomb technician, she's very precise. <laughs> skull and and uh, brains just have uh, I almost said skull and bones skull and brains just have um, regular table manners I don't know about the rest of them I imagine Metal Maniac is probably doing whatever Ira's doing but worse like he's splashing the Arby sauce on other people Okay, that's us done. Good, and that did go a little bit faster, I'm pretty sure. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay. Who's gonna pop out here? Oh! Oh, we managed to leap back from the doorway as the explosion flames the whole junction of corridors here. Whoa, that's a lot of damage! You hear a loud boom as a gently lofted satchel charge lands at your feet and explodes. Splinters and fragments of wood hanging upon fire black hinges are all that remain of the door that was once here. Whoa. Somebody threw that at us. Jeez, oh Pete. So I've never actually played Soldier of Fortune, so I don't remember that. I'll have to check it out when I eventually play through. An old guardian looks up. Never taught you rangers to read, did they? He picks up a chainsaw. Let us fight. Monk Petal. 
Patel. Oh, okay. Whoa. Never taught us to read. I didn't see any written warnings anywhere, but that may have been me. I'm Maybe I'm being too lackadaisical about this. Okay, they said he picks up a chainsaw. Let's actually, let's evade this turn and let him come to us. Because if we step to him, he will get to attack us and we won't get to attack him. Yeah, there we go. Okay, he runs at us. All right, let's unload on this guy. I'm not playing. This dude's scary. <laughs> uh, I like this characterization of Ira as someone whom his friends have to label his melee weapon so that he remembers which end is which. Oh, there we go. Proton Axe for the win. We got him. We won't loot. A chainsaw and some books. Okay. Well, we don't need either of those things. Dang, man. Look what he did, though. Look at that. He about kicked our asses. Ooh. There's a lot more of this than I thought there would be, but at least it makes sense that all this is back here. A rather surprised man looks up from a poker table. Deal me out, he says as he draws his gun. Master Paz, Brother Jackson, Brother Nobel. Oh, Master Thomas, Brother Dick, Brother Harold. Hmm, okay, well, two groups. Okay, at least they one of them's already standing there, so... And Pedros is down. <laughs> okay. Ira is almost down, but... Oh, there goes Master Paz, though. Good. I don't want Ira to go unconscious, because he does have the Proton Axe, so... <laughs> Brother Jackson, I am for real. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. That's going to be stuck in my head now, though. Big oof. Ooh, there goes Brother Nobel. Okay, let's take a step forward. Half the party is in single digits. I do not like it. It's okay, now that he's unconscious, he's immune to damage. He can't be hurt any further. Okay. Oh, I get it. Tom, Dick, and Harry. Oh, no, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Oh man, what if they did though? Like, it's a really good location. What if the rangers were just like, well, we feel really bad about this, but it is prime real estate, and this place was built to withstand a siege. And then Dinah's like, yeah, but like, we wrecked it by ourselves, like seven of us. It's like, yeah, but we're protagonists, that doesn't count. It's probably fine if it's someone else trying to get in here. I mean, they held out on their own before we got here. For how long? <laughs> yeah, we got the Nobel Prize in fisticuffs. Man, we're gonna have to go rest again. These guardians mean fucking business. Jeez, oh Pete. Who wants loot? Oh, Metal Maniac cannot get any more. Can Ira get any more? Oh, we got a power pack. Floor cash. All right. Been a while since we saw floor cash. Cool. That sweet, sweet floor cash. Excellent. 
Yeah, they keep referring to them as ground round, and so then like the the obvious next step is people burgers, and it's like no. Oh, thank you for the floor cash, Crow. <laughs> Okay, we have to rest. There we go. We've gotta. Man, it is a good thing that weapons and armor don't have durability in this game because, jeez. Oh, yeah, mystery meat. <laughs> don't ask too many questions. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Um, I actually did not think that the... Guardian Citadel was going to be this big a deal after what we experienced last week. Um, I thought that when we finished this section, like, I wasn't expecting to find doors up here. I thought this would be it and it would be kind of done. So I thought it would be over with by now, but here we are. And there's an unknown amount left to still explore. Hmm. I'm kind of excited, though, because that also means that, like, I don't really know, uh, like, what to expect from here on out. Anything could happen. Hmm. You know... We still have not found uh, a control panel that will open that vault door. Of course, we haven't explored everything yet. We also haven't found any way to turn on the lights in the museum or whatever. Yeah, you know, it could be uh, it could be beyond meat. This is the future, after all, an AU future, no less. Okay, there we go. We're good. I wonder, because we haven't found anything related to the museum. So, can we just... Can we open these? You open the case successfully. Okay. Wants loot. Skull wants loot. I'm sorry? A grazer bat fetish, I assume, is what that says? What? What? What is that? A grazer bat fetish. Yeah. What the hell is that? I mean, I'm assuming that this means fetish, um, like in the in the sense of you know, like a talisman, right? Like an like an occult, uh. Uh, thingamabob, but what's a grazer bat? Does anybody know what that is? Maybe we'll find out what it does. Okay, but I hadn't tried to just open the cases, so let's see if there's anything else good in here. Two gas masks. Okay, we don't need those. Everybody has one. Okay. A broken toaster. Ooh, hey. That's the second one of those that we've found. I'll save that. Spies your efforts to open it. Well, we'll just try again. Yeah, they're like an offhand thing. Offhand weapon. Who wants loot? Four clay pots. Okay. And this is... Ooh, a quasar key. Can you carry that? No. Can Skull carry that? Yes. Okay, so we have found a Sonic key, then we found the Pulsar key, and now we found a Quasar key. What does that go to? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Could that maybe be... Is that how we open this, maybe? Surely not. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. The black hole key. 
I want whatever is in there, especially because it, I can tell that it's trapped. We only have one thing of TNT, though. And it took at least two to get through those doors, so I'm assuming it's going to take a minimum of two to get through the other ones as well. So we will come back later because I'm still hoping that we may encounter, like, a console or a button somewhere that's going to unlock that for us. Okay. And up here. Ooh, what's over there? It looks like maybe it's that stairs? And she's by a stairway to heaven. Let's go this way. There's another door. Nothing happens. Okay. Oop. The guardian jailers rise up and cry out in surprise as you enter the room. Okay, so this is the jail? They have a jail? Warden Nicholas, Jailer Corbett, Jailer Patrick. Okay. Let's see if this dead ends, and then we've got a couple more rooms, and then we'll be done on the eastern side over here. I'm betting that that big door in the northern center of the first part of the citadel goes into the big open area in the middle of this part. So when we go through the middle, we will kind of we'll, we'll find how that connects up. Hmm. Okay, good. Got Warden Nicholas. He's down. Depending on how we progress... Oh, Brains is Brawling went up to level 5. Nice. Very good. Awesome. Um, depending on how we progress, I may push a little bit past my normal streaming window if it feels like we are close to finishing because I don't know exactly where we're going to go after the, the Guardian Citadel either and so if we can finish it in one stream I, I would want to okay this is locked not for long oops Ooh, a sizzling blade slices by you as you enter the room. The proton axe in the hands of a giant tears a chunk out of the wall. We got another proton axe. Warden Jethro. Get him, guys. Get him. We're going to get that proton axe. They specifically called it out in the description, so he's got a... Oh, he only had 27 hit points? Are you fucking joking? Okay, well, pretty much everybody's got seven ranks in... Um, it is a Proton Axe. Okay, wait a second. Let's... Everybody's got seven ranks in Brawling now, except for, like, I think, Pedros and Brains. Okay. So I'm looking at their Strength and Luck scores. You know what? You know what? Forget it. Never mind. Because I'm not giving it to Pedros, Christina, or Metal Maniac, because especially, like, they'll just refuse to use it. Pedros will get knocked unconscious, and then she's gonna disobey us, and he's gonna do whatever. So, you know what? Dinah gets it. I hope so. I would like to think so. There we go. Took me a second to find it. Okay, that's that's pretty good. That feels good. Two proton axes. Oh, man. I'm assuming that that's what it is, old man. Is that, yeah, they're probably just... They're Hollywood chainsaws. Which, as that's a good description. They're just really noisy lightsabers. Okay, what's in here? Nothing. What's in here? Something. Yes, hello? What's in here? Nothing. Okay. And it doesn't look like... I don't see a secret door or anything up here. That could be... I'm guessing... That's probably going to be kind of like... Um, 
back in Project Darwin where the door that we went through teleported us to a different part of the same map to save space. So like we're probably still on the same level, we're just in a, the other corner. Oh nice. The two ultimates, are there, what do you mean, is that like all the proton axes there are? Oh, okay, no, sorry, I missed your other message. Oh, okay, so unless there's a glitch or something, there are only two proton axes. That's sad. But also, I guess it makes sense. Please help me get out of here. Red Hawk is at 10 feet. Hmm. Okay, so I guess we could hire this guy, but we've got a full roster, so we're going to leave him here. Okay, so we will go over this way next. I'm waiting for Skull's uh, picklock skill to go up as well. A surprised woman looks up from her desk, then lunges for a gun. Sister Faith. She sees us dual wielding proton axes. Oh, she runs away. Yep. Oh, man. Now, see, that's what I want in my science fantasy uh, shooter games. Is just enough realism to make it fun. Like using the chainsaw to prevent bodies from reanimating. The Doom modding community is incredible. <laughs> Okay, well. Oh, well, you know what they say, faith is fragile. <laughs> oh, boy. Skullduggery raised her perception skill to level four. Ooh. Oh, because there's a... There's a trap. <laughs> perception only ever goes up when there's a trap. I love how she's the one who noticed it, but she took 12 damage, which is more than anybody but Metal Maniac. Okay. Cool. Sure. A huge enraged man raises an energy rifle and fires. Cardinal Scott. Oh, this must be like the big dude. Oh man, that's that's a lot of damage. Not as much as I was worried from that description, but still a significant amount of damage. A worrying amount of damage, perhaps. Oh, uh-oh, 25. That's very worrying. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's just beat the shit out of this guy very quickly. See, some of that founds, uh, sounds fun, and then some of it sounds like um, playing Fallout with like the hard mode difficulty thing turned on where you can die of dehydration and stuff. Which, some people are really into that, and it's like, eh, if I wanted to die of dehydration, I'd just play Dark Cloud. <laughs> well, if I can't run faster than a Jaguar, then what are we even doing playing Doom? Come on now. Ooh. Metal Maniac is seriously wounded, oh no. Oh, this guy's uh, holding his own here. Oh, good, Ira got him. Okay, whew, I was getting worried there for a second. Okay, good. Proving what's in here. Oh, right, um, doesn't matter. A laser carbine, some cash and power packs. Okay, we like that. Hmm. Think we're gonna have to rest again. Dang, but it seems like we have taken care of the entire eastern portion here. And yeah, that looks like stairs to me. So I'm assuming that there is yet another portion to the Guardian Citadel after this, which means that we may be still in the Guardian Citadel next stream. That's kind of what I was trying to avoid, but we will have to see how things go. If it feels like we're almost done, I'm going to push through and finish it, but if it feels like there's a 
a lot laid out in front of us, like there's like just a lot of Guardian Citadel left, then I'll go ahead and call it and that's what I'll do for the next one on the following Saturday. I just love that it's called a hideous destructor. Okay, we're getting there. Shoo. Oh man. The waiting is the worst part. Uh, I'm going to assume that there is a similar complex over on the western side of this area. Which means we're going to have to go across that big open middle part, which I do not like. Because goodness knows what could be in there. We know that there are some dudes who were shooting at us earlier. And they are still there, because we did not kill them. But there could be literally anything else. And we are using brawling because the only other option is to either switch everyone to energy weapons or everyone to assault rifles as appropriate. Uh, and even at rank 7, I just don't know how much assault rifles are going to do against the Guardians because they just seem really well armored, kind of like us. Hmm. Any day now. I'm watching Dinah's hit points for the most part. Ooh, that's a good point, actually. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that, Crow, because it has been a while since we radioed in. Ooh, thank you for reminding me. Let's see if anyone has earned a promotion. All right. Dinah is a sergeant major still. Uh, let's see here. Well, we don't have to pile everything into IQ at this point because we know that, um, you know, we've been able to rank up our energy weapons. So for her, at least, we don't have to do that. So I'm going to say for her... What do y'all think? I feel like her dexterity is, is okay. So it probably needs to be either agility to make her dodgier... Uh, or we need to raise her strength or luck to improve her brawling. That's what I'm thinking. So what do y'all think? Should we focus on damage? I mean, she does have the Proton Axe now. She does have the Proton Axe, so maybe we should focus on luck uh, to improve her brawling accuracy instead of strength for her damage. Why don't we do that? Why don't we split it? We'll give her one luck... And then we can also give her one agility. We'll just split it down the middle. Alright, Ira Knuckles is a sergeant. Okay, Ira. Ira, my guy. <sighs> Ira, Ira, Ira. His strength is already at 20. Ira, we need to increase his dexterity because now that he's got rank 7 in energy weapons and assault rifles, uh, he we need to work on his accuracy, I think. See, that's what I thought. I wanted her to be a high luck character because of explosions. Okay, Skullduggery has achieved the rank of Master Grenadier. Oh, and here we go. Here we go. This is it, folks. There we go. Now we have just unlocked energy weapons for Skull. We have to go pick up the skill. But she does have it. Reigns can't get promoted. Pedros. Christina is now a Grenadier Major. And same thing for Christina. There is energy weapons. And let's do the same thing for her. I'm thinking let's let's boost her dexterity for accuracy. Metal Maniac does not. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? We are in the process of resting anyway, right? Let's do this. Uh, there are no enemies right now that are, like, in the middle of hit points, so to speak. So let's step away. And it's not that big of a trip to 
because in anything that um, jumps out at us right now it will count as melee range anyway so that way we don't have to worry about having chainsaws let's go over here to Las Vegas pop in at the library and let's pick up energy weapons for skull and that leaves her with four points which now we know we do not have to spend those on energy weapons I was hoarding them um, but I mean if we can just shoot the guardians and they'll go up really fast then so what do y'all think uh, maybe safe cracking because that came up once before we can't raise her picklock skill. That's way too expensive. But safe cracking, we haven't gotten a lot of practice at, so it might be difficult to level up. Yeah, what do you say we spend these four points on safe cracking and we'll make her rank two in that? I can't think of a, a better use for it on Skull specifically, unless we were going to unlock the doctor skill, which is the, you know, rank up of medic, but... I think we're probably fine. Yeah, let's do safe cracking. Okay. Dinah has too much on her mind to learn anything. Ira has got skill points, though. Um, oh, man, look at that. That's expensive. I wonder if these points right here, like, I wonder how they relate to how much you have to do with the skill to manually level it up without spending skill points by using it. I don't know. It'd be interesting to know. Five points. Oh, it takes 128, so it doubles every single time. And then skills either just, they start at one or they start at three if they're more expensive. Wow. Okay. Um, if that's the case. Oh, yeah. See? 255. Damn. Damn. I don't know what to do with five skill points. I don't think we have anything we could spend five skill points on. Shit. Oh, well, anti-tank weapons. He needs to rank that up. Yeah, let's do that. Let's give him a rank in anti-tank weapons. And then he can rank it up again next time, actually. Okay, skull. Brains did not level up, but he does have points. Is there anything that we should be thinking about grabbing for him? I w I'm almost tempted to grab a, like either clone tech or electronics, but he doesn't have enough, so maybe we'll just wait. Here, Pedros has four points. He is not up to energy weapons yet. Is there something else that would be worth it to go ahead and spend? He still doesn't have Medic. He probably should have at least one rank in Medic. He also does not have Perception. Let's grab Perception. And yeah, let's grab Medic for him. Because he will have plenty of points by the time that he's able to unlock energy weapons. Now Christina. Christina gets a rank in energy weapons. And... Hmm. She has anti-tank weapons. She's got acrobat, silent movement. I feel like there was some basic skill that she did not have. And maybe what I'm thinking of is medic. Like she didn't come with that and we had to buy it. Because she does have climb. She has swim. Oh, she doesn't have perception. There we go. Let's grab perception for her. And uh, that's probably good. Right. Metal Maniac, he's got three points and probably very little to spend it on. Oh, wait, that's Christina again. There we go. I was like, why? I know he does not have just one rank in energy weapons. Something is bad wrong. Okay, he is the one who, he has climb, he has swim, he has perception, he does not have acrobat, 
And he does not have medic. Let's get a medic. That's more important. Acrobat is highly situational. Alright, now to avoid unnecessarily spending ammo. I'm not going to switch them just yet. In case there are random encounters. There we go. Alright, now. So, Christina needs to switch to a laser carbine. And Skull needs to switch to a laser carbine. Do you have one? No. Okay, who's got a laser carbine? Um, well, we know Ira has one because he was using it until just a minute ago. There we go. Trade to Skull. Oh, dang it, she's full up. She's going to have to give something away. Oh, hey! We actually have another thing of TNT. I forgot about that, if indeed I new. Oh, no, we have several things of TNT. Oh, I think I bought extra. I think I bought extra and put it on Skull and then forgot that we had it, maybe. Oops. <laughs> That's totally okay, though. That is fine. That's alright. Okay, now. There we go. Equip. Okay, so that way Christina and Skull can be working on their energy weapon skill. That leaves um, Mayor Pedros is the only one, isn't he? Dinah's got it, Iris got it and it's maxed out, Brains has it and it's maxed out, Metal Maniac maxed it out, Christina and Skull are just starting, so yeah, Mayor Pedros is the only one who does not have energy weapons now, and it's going to take him three more levels to unlock it. Man, bless his heart. He's gonna have to work for it. It's the only big flaw in this game that I see, because if you start lagging behind, you stay behind. Because of, like, you only get XP for a kill. You don't get it for helping. Okay, uh... I'm going to try and blow this door open now that we know we have TNT. And quite a bit of it, actually. Ooh. Ooh, so that didn't work at all, I don't think. Oh, wow. We don't have plastic explosive, which would be stronger, so it's not even using the TNT because it's it doesn't work. Damn. Um, can we shoot it with a rocket? Have we ever tried that? Why does he have a 9mm clip? Why do we have that? Um, what's stronger? A law rocket or a sabot rocket? Well, we know we can buy these and they're expensive. Can we... You assault the door as best you can? Okay, so that doesn't work either. Dang, would a different kind of rocket work? Perhaps. No. Okay, so there must be a button or something somewhere. We are not intended to... to... to go that route, I guess. Yeah, that's what I thought, but... Okay, um... The outer sanctum of the Guardian Citadel is massive and decorated with items from the time before the Holocaust. Okay, so that's where we came in over there. So I guess this is called the Outer Sanctum. Master Ciro, Adept Kate, Brother Nuris. Master Griffin, Sister Tracy, Adept Alina. Those are the ones I remember from before. This is going to be rough. I thought there was just one group in there. I was worried that there would be more than one. Ooh, 20 damage to dynamite. Oh, man. 14 on Skull, 28 on Brains. Oh, oof. Damn. I should have come in from the other side because then we would be closer to the one group on the right. But I got cocky when I walked in in the middle and something didn't immediately attack us. It was like, oh, it's, it's fine. It's just that one group then. 
Nope, they have friends. Okay. Big oof. And then after we deal with these guys, we're going to have to, like, crawl all the way back across the floor in the other direction to hit the other ones, too. At least our armor really is, like, blunting the worst of this. But see, look, there goes brains. Oh, dang. Bruh. Okay, this is the last move. Phew. This is rough, y'all. Okay. Um, let's let's deal with some of these guys. Oh man, Dinah's in critical condition. Um, let's focus on Master Griffin. Pedros, Christina, Metal Maniac. Oh, this is bad. This is real bad. <laughs> I have made a tactical error. Oop. Okay, Metal Maniac in with some damage. Ira will finish him off. See, when Ira starts swinging... We know. Let's grab the Adept. You better not have just wasted a whole clip. If you burned a whole clip with that laser rifle, or laser carbine, I swear to God. Oh my God, she did. Bitch. <laughs> Uh I hate you. They are not chasing us or shooting at us. They may be mostly melee. couple more moves here. We're going to go back through that doorway and then loop back around. Here we go. Enter new location? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, um, Brains is up, good. You didn't help Skull, there we go. All right, the Doctor skill went up to level two, wow! We have finally been injured in sufficiently that Brains has leveled up as a Doctor. <laughs> okay, they're both fine. Um, Christina had better reload, I guess. You really making me think twice about uh, whether or not you should have one of those guns, though. Metal Maniac managed to resist doing that the entire time that he had a laser carbine. <sighs> okay, so it looks like there's quite a bit of the Guardian Citadel left. Um, we have this whole section over here we have done everything on this side the best that I can tell I'm still confused about this Oop. leave us alone you're gonna chase us what if we could like lure them over here a little bit Ooh, maybe. Hmm. I wonder if we could. Perhaps. So if they'll move a little closer to that wall, we can loop around the doorway and gank them. Let's give it a try. 
maybe. We're low on health, but if we can get to them, then. 57 feet. They're not too far away. And they don't seem to be shooting. They really don't. I don't know if that's just because they have short-range weapons or what. But I'm going to take care of these guys. And then uh, we're going to rest. And I'm going to call it there for tonight. Because it seems like there is a significant amount of the Guardian Citadel that is still yet to be explored. Because we have the whole western side, which getting through these guys will get us access to. Uh, but we still have to explore it, and who knows what's over there. And then we have those big stairs at the end, which presumably are going to lead to an inner sanctum? Since this is the outer sanctum, I guess? So... Oh, wait a minute. There we go. Single. So we will see... But it seems like uh, there's quite a bit left. And given that it has taken me this long to explore as much as I have... Oh, Mayor Pedros' Brawling went up to level 5. Nice, nice, nice. Then that means that uh, I don't think that I can finish the Guardian Citadel tonight. So... We will dispense with these fellows. Energy weapon level 2, alright. Already moving along. And he goes down. There we go. Excellent. Okay, it looks like the hallway is clear. The north end of the sanctum ends in broad marble steps heading up. Okay, so it is a staircase. Ooh, and there's a door right there too. Ooh, so there's a door behind the stairs, and then, then there's this whole section over here with all kinds of stuff in it. We're going to have to find out what that stuff is next time. So I will be back um, Hmm. There's something funny up with this middle part. Because we can step on both sides of this, but not in the middle. Oh, the center plate in the triptych is loose, and behind it you find a small alcove where relics have been stored. Oh, do we? A black star key. Well, there you go, Crow. <laughs> There's the neutron star key. Okay, cool. Cool. See, I knew my gut was telling me that there was something there. All right. Okay, well, that, that is where we will leave it. So I will be back with more Wasteland next Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which is New York and Miami time here in the U.S. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. This has been a great stream. We covered a lot of ground, uh, leveled up a lot of skills. Really appreciate your company and the privilege of your time because you could have spent it doing anything, but you were here with me and with Dynamite, with Ira Knuckles, with Brains Oberon, and with Skullduggery. And thank you, you as well, all of you. Shout out once again to Dragon for the raid. And uh, I will be back on Monday. If you don't want to wait for more Wasteland, you can join me then for my solo Monday series, Divine Divinity, where things have been getting very interesting there. We did a lot of exploring last time, leveled up quite a few of our skills. I'm very excited to see where it goes, because we have a mission in front of us. We have to help the sick people of Rivertown, but I'm not sure exactly how to do that yet, so maybe we will find out this time. And normally on Thursdays, I would, as I did this previous Thursday, be streaming Dune, the 1992 CD-DOS version. However, uh, due to completely foreseen circumstances, I am not going to be able to stream this coming Thursday, February the 16th. So that means that, uh, unfortunately, you will have to wait for more Dune until February the 23rd. I'm sorry. But uh, if you haven't seen it already, then please do go catch up on that series over on the YouTube channel. 
where the first two episodes are already uploaded over there. And then the following Monday after that, February the 20th, specific pixel, my wonderful husband will be back with me, guiding me through more of my first blind playthrough of Paper Mario on the N64 as we head off to new areas in what I presume is going to be the last major region of the game, the, the ice area, whatever it's called, I'm guessing. So we will see what happens then. Don't forget to follow on Twitch if you haven't already, or if you are watching on YouTube after I upload this to the Wasteland playlist, then please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed, and like this video, leave a comment for the algorithm. It helps us out a great deal. And uh, if you want to throw a little more support at the channel too, then you are more than welcome to shoot us that Amazon Prime free monthly subscription and make Jeff Bezos' money do something worth a damn. You can also join our Patreon community over on Patreon. We have some wonderful patrons who are great supporters, and uh, we push their game suggestions and requests to the top, in addition to having them help us shortlist the games that go on the public polls that y'all get to vote on. So all kinds of good stuff going on over there if you want to become a patron. All of our socials are linked down below no matter where you are watching so that you can just jump around as easily as you please. And with everyone's hit points at full, I think that's my cue to bid you adieu. I'll see you in the next one, and until then, as always, thanks for playing.